Back in the Jurassic period, around 195 million years ago, Dilophosaurus ruled North America as one of the top predators. Now you may remember it best from the movie Jurassic Park, where it's shown as a venom-spitting beast with a rattling frill around its neck and two paddle-like crests on its head. But the reality of this dinosaur is far from looking like a lizard. It's more like a bird, except it's massive. And I mean 8 feet tall, 25 feet long kind of massive, making it the largest dinosaur of its time. The word Dilophosaurus itself translates to double-crested lizard in Greek, and it really makes you think, why on earth would it be called that? Well, stick around and find out. Turns out it gets its name from the rather funny headgear it sported, basically two slender bony crests extending from its snout to behind its eye socket. Although the actual shape of these crests remains uncertain because they were likely covered in keratin, the same material as rhino horns, it's believed that they were probably brightly colored and served as an attention-grabbing display for potential mates. There's even a possibility that these crests had inflatable air sacs on top, similar to modern birds, you know, to make them look more handsome. But what's even more fascinating is that paleontologists have found that these crests and other bones were strengthened with air pockets arranged in a honeycomb structure. This unique design made the skeleton both robust and lightweight, allowing Dilophosaurus to achieve a larger size compared to other dinosaurs. Now rewind the clock back to the late Triassic in Western North America, and most dinosaurs were no bigger than turkeys or eagles. But the Dilophosaurus wasn't there to fit in it was way bigger than how it was shown in the movies. In fact, the largest ones weighed around 1,500 pounds, similar to an adult polar bear. In the early Jurassic era, when dinosaurs were becoming the big shots on land, Dilophosaurus stood out as one of the largest predators. Although not as massive as the later Tyrannosaurus and Carnosaurus, crossing paths with a Dilophosaurus would still have been a pretty serious threat for a human. What makes it even more unique is its longer and stronger arms compared to other large meat-eating dinosaurs like Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus. Even its legs were relatively longer. When scientists first stumbled upon Dilophosaurus skeletons, they thought it was related to the so-called carnosaurs like Allosaurus and Streptospondylus. They even filled in the missing pieces of the pelvis to match those animals. But as more well-preserved Dilophosaurus skeletons came to light, it turned out to have a pelvis anatomy that falls somewhere in between the Coelophysis-like creatures from the late Triassic and the Allosaurus-like ones from the late Jurassic. Moreover, the Dilophosaurus skull has this big gap in the upper jaw, right between its front teeth. Surprisingly, this gap is like a weak spot in its skull. It hints that Dilophosaurus probably didn't have a strong bite compared to other dinosaurs of similar size without this gap. One idea is that this gap might have helped Dilophosaurus grab small prey from tight spots like rock crevices. But considering it was a massive 25 meters long, that doesn't seem like the most efficient way for such a big dinosaur to eat. Another theory is that Dilophosaurus wasn't much of a hunter, but more of a scavenger. In this scenario, it would only need a bite force to rip meat from a dead animal, using its size to scare off smaller carnivores from their meals. So, that gap in Dilophosaurus's jaw might not be the key to understanding its eating habits after all. Even though there were other dinosaurs around that Dilophosaurus could have hunted, it's possible it used its sharp claws for hunting instead. The gap might have been handy for picking meat off bones, since Dilophosaurus could have struggled with crunching bones due to its weaker bite force. Interestingly, a smaller version of this gap is also found in an earlier dinosaur called Coelophysis. Some scientists think that Dilophosaurus and Coelophysis might be related, with Dilophosaurus possibly evolving from Coelophysis. But there are so many ways Coelophysis could connect to other dinosaurs that it's tough to pinpoint the most likely scenario. When they first found Dilophosaurus in 1942, they didn't have the head crests, so they named it Megalosaurus weatherilli. It took over a decade and another more complete discovery, one with those distinctive crests, to realize that they had a different dinosaur on their hands. But what's even more interesting is that they found three Dilophosaurus buddies together, hinting that these dinosaurs might have roamed in packs. Dilophosaurus now has its own special category in the dinosaur family, called Dilophosauridae. Now, what exactly made the Dilophosaurus so darn fierce? Well, it had some pretty cool features to help it catch prey and deal with other dinosaurs. 
but the most important weapon it had was its big, vicious jaws. The jaws and skull were quite big compared to its body, making up about 10% of its length. This gave it enough room for around 30 teeth, which were all long, curved, thin, and squished sideways. Each tooth had a bunch of small, sharp edges called serrations, with some teeth having over 70 of them on both sides. These serrations made it easy for the Dilophosaurus to slice through flesh, causing quick blood loss and death for the unfortunate animals it hunted. And hey, forget about the whole spitting venom thing you saw in Jurassic Park. This dino, despite being on the heavier side, had a fail-proof way of catching prey, speed. It came equipped with killer legs, a light body, and some cool fleshy air sacs in its spine. Those sacs helped it breathe like birds and crocs do. Now, if being fast, having a killer bite, and a decent size weren't enough to rule its turf, there's a chance this dinosaur was a team player. Yep, some scientists think it could have been a pack hunter. In fact, they found three dino buddies buried together. Yep, we know quite a bit about Dilophosaurus's life, thanks to some cool finds in the American Southwest. In the 1940s, three of them were discovered pretty close to each other. Now, we're not sure if they lived together and died in the same spot, or if they got there by water from different places. However, it isn't likely that they formed packs of more than three, because given their size, that wouldn't really be sustainable. Moving on to its structure, Dilophosaurus skeletons stand out because its left arm is kind of underdeveloped, with a smaller upper arm bone, humerus, while the right arm is strong and sturdy. This difference might be due to tough living conditions and is a case of what scientists call fluctuating asymmetry. Most animals have bodies that are perfectly symmetrical, but when one part, like an arm, is different from the other, it's usually because of genetics or something external affecting it. In this case, it could be that Dilophosaurus faced some challenging circumstances that impacted the development of its left arm. Even with all the cool perks the Dilophosaurus had, being the Dino King wasn't a walk in the park. These guys were the battle scot champions of their time, often showing signs of wounds and diseases. The holotype, the poster child for the species, takes the cake, with the highest number of messed up bones among all theropods. It's got eight bones that have seen better days, while the runner-up only has four. Now, where did all these bumps and bruises come from? Well, it seems like their arms took the brunt of it, dealing with stuff like bony tumors, stress fractures, twists, and deformities. The poor holotype couldn't even properly use one of its arms. Imagine being a dino with one arm tied behind your back. Some scientists think these injuries might have come from failed hunts or throwdowns with other dinosaurs. What's wild, though, is that despite having banged up arms, a study of more than 60 Dilophosaurus found no fractures in their legs and feet. That just goes to show how crucial their arms were. And hey, these dinos were no wimps. The fact that they were running around with battle scars left and right just shows that they were the tough guys of their era. Living in a time when the Earth meant serious business, they probably had a massive pain tolerance. And what's more, despite the harsh environment and recent extinction events it went through, the Dilophosaurus thrived alongside other dinosaurs in its habitat. Some notable companions included Cerasaurus and Megapnosaurus. The ecosystem was also rich in non-dinosaur species, such as hyperdone sharks, bony fish, and lizards. But despite this diverse array of life, the Dilophosaurus stood out as the top predator in early Jurassic North America, thanks to its unmatched size and ferocity. In the end, it's safe to say that Dilophosaurus was a colossal predator that really defied all Hollywood stereotypes. With its impressive size, crazy powerful jaw, and speedy legs, it was the OG predator in an insanely diverse ecosystem. Definitely earned my respect. What about you? What fascinated you the most? Its massive size or the fact that it doesn't actually spit venom? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Go on, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next one.